Welcome to the Idea Climbing Podcast. In this episode, we discuss how to develop the mindset for successful networking with my guest, Dr. Ivan Meisner. Ivan is the founder of BNI, or Business Network International, that boasts 11,500 chapters in countries around the world. Members reported $24.3 billion in closed business for the organization last year. There are over 100 countries in the world with a lower GDP or gross domestic product than that number. We dive into topics such as how to bridge the gap between visibility, credibility, and profitability without being too salesy, the best way to get more ongoing qualified referrals with the GAINS methodology, the big difference between a lead and a referral, and more golden nuggets of advice. You're going to love this show. Thank you for joining me for the Idea Climbing Podcast, Ivan. I really appreciate you making the time. Oh, my pleasure. I love doing these. I, you know, I think an entrepreneur is either working in their flame or working in their wax. And when they're in their flame, they're on fire, they're excited, they're passionate about what they're doing. Uh, you can hear it in their voice. You can see it in the way they behave. And when they're working in their wax, it just takes all their energy away. <laughs> and you, you can hear that in their voice and you can see that in the way they behave. This is my flame. I love doing interviews. I love pouring into people. You can see I have a lot of gray hair <laughs> And so I, <laughs> I've done a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong. And so I love to talk about my good and bad experiences. Well, let's dive right in. I love, I would love to learn more about how to develop the mindset and skill set for successful networking. And I love that you said the mindset comes first. So many people to start with tactics and they completely, in my opinion, missed the boat. How did you learn that? What's the story behind that? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, again, I have a lot of gray hair. I learned the hard way. Um, you know, I think most people, well, first of all, we don't teach this in colleges and universities. It's not taught in school anywhere in the world, not just in North America, but anywhere in the world. We, we don't teach it. So what happens is people go out and they have the wrong mindset. They use networking as a face-to-face -face cold calling opportunity. Hi, my, Mark, my name's Ivan. Uh, you know, let's do business. Or here's three copies of my card. Maybe you'll pass them on to some friends or some crazy <laughs> thing like that. And um, I, I, so I went to an event in London uh, quite a few years ago, and there were 900 people. I was the keynote speaker, speaker. And I watched this event take place all day. And I said, I asked the audience, I said, how many of you are here today hoping to, you know, maybe just possibly sell something? Mark, 900 people raised their hands. It was like everybody, because it was a networking event with speakers. <laughs> So I said, great. Second question, how many of you are here today hoping to you know, maybe just possibly buy something? <laughs> no one raised their hands. Not one single person. This is what I call the networking disconnect. People show mm -hmm. up at networking events wanting to sell, but nobody's there to buy. So why go? You go to work your way through the VC p process this is the mindset the beginning of the mindset vcp stands for visibility credibility profitability so first you have to be visible you have to know who you are what you do then you have to establish credibility that's the one that takes a long time establishing credibility takes time it doesn't happen overnight networking is more of a marathon than it is a sprint so you got to go into it understanding that and then a third is uh, profitability. You know, once people know who you are, what you do, they know you're credible, then they're willing to pass you referrals because you have this relationship with them and you have credibility. What tends to happen is we try to jump over visibility, jump over credibility, get right to profitability. In one of my books on uh, networking, uh, we called that premature solicitation, which mm -hmm. you don't want to say pass three times. It'll get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so that's part of the mindset is it's all about relationships. It's not about transactions. So entrepreneurs at the end of the day do need to sell. As far as how do you do it without being, I'll use the word salesy or schmarmy. How do you bridge that gap between credibility and visibility and profitability without being like, oh God, here he comes. I see him, you know, the person you see across the room and think, oh, here comes the pitch. How do you do it without being that way? Well, you do it by finding ways to help someone else. Uh, you know, our philosophy in the company that I started, BNI, is giver's gain. And, and we incorporated that into the organization because we understood that if you want to get business from people, you have to be willing to help other people. And so what tends to happen is the exact opposite. We meet someone and we're trying to close them, uh, sell to them, especially if we're networking up, networking with somebody who's more successful than us. Man, we're going right for the sale. And that's a huge mistake. Instead, what you want to do is build a relationship. You want to find overlapping areas of interest, and you want to find ways to potentially 
help that individual. And by help them, I don't mean sell them your product or your service. You know, it might be something as simple as, you know, when I have a conversation with someone, uh, they may say, you know, I'm struggling with this issue or that issue. And I'll say, hey, you know, I, re I read an article on that, or I know somebody who's a coach in that area. Would you like me to make an introduction? And, and nine times out of 10, they say, yeah, that would be great. And then I say, well, uh, you know, give me your card and uh, I, here's mine. And I will absolutely you know, give you a call or I'll, I'll, I'll link the two of you together. Now, I usually write on the back of their card, introduce them to so-and-so. Just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm in 75 countries. If you're in North America, don't do that in some countries. In some countries, like in, particularly in Asia, Japan, uh, China, it's, it's, it's rude to write on a business card. So in some countries, have a notepad. Uh, in the U.S., you know, U.S., it's like, oh, here's my card. You know, it's no big deal. Yeah. And writing on the back, I, I still say, do you mind if I, you know, make a note on the back of your card? And they always say yes. Anyway, then I go back. And when I get home, I make the introduction to the person I know, like, and trust. Somebody who I'm at credibility with. And they're at credibility with me. Maybe even profitability. Mm -hmm. We may have referred to each other. Now I've helped this person. Now, if you help somebody and then you call them two, three weeks later and you say, hey, how'd that work out? That introduction I made. And they say it worked out great. Or, or they may sometimes say, well, it didn't work out, but I really appreciate the introduction. If you then said, I'd love to get together with you for coffee or lunch and just learn more about what you do and maybe tell you a little bit about what I do, I, just, a, just a meeting to, to make a connection with you, um, would you be available? I'm telling you, if you start by helping someone nine times out of 10, they're going to say, yeah, of course, be yeah. happy to get together. That's how you should be networking. You're not trying to sell to people. You're trying to build relationships with people. Mindset. So what are some ways to build? Once you get visibility, I think that's a little bit easier of the three as far as going to networking events, online, offline, whatever it might be. Once you get visibility, what are some ways to build the credibility? Because I agree, I think that that one particularly is a just leapfrogged. It's just yes. boom, bye. How do you build credibility? Well, you, you got to attend networking groups. You know, people need to see you. Networking is a contact sport. You know, they, they need to actually see you uh, and 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 listen to other people talk about you and talk to you. That helps. Also, one to ones, doing one to ones, uh, that meeting that I mentioned is very, very important. In BNI, we did a study of, and, and we meet every week in, in our organization. So, you know, they're, they're meeting a lot, but here's, here's a key bit of data to answer your question. People that did four one-to-ones a month, meeting with somebody individually at a coffee shop or whatever, versus one one-to-one -one a month. The people who did four meetings in person, one-to-one, -one, four a month, gave 100% more referrals to that individual or to the individuals in their network. But more importantly, they received 100% more referrals, literally double. It was oh a master's yeah, it, it was a master's thesis in yeah. um, um, Europe. And so we have the data. We have it. It's on, it's on um, one of my podcasts, uh, bnipodcast.com. And um, it, it, twice as many referrals. By just meeting with someone for coffee once a week. It, you see, networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about mm -hmm. cultivating relationships with people. That's the way you get referrals, not by going out and just trying to close deals. I mean, look, people say to me, yeah, but you know, I, I want to, I, I need to, you know, sell something, sell something. Even a blind squirrel can find a nut. You're going to stumble over business, right? It'll yeah. it'll happen. But if you want ongoing referrals, it's all about relationships. So did, unpack that a little bit. What is a one-on-one? -on -one, what is the structure or character? What are, are the characteristics or the structure of a one-on-one -on -one meeting? What does a successful one look like? Yeah, and we, we use the term one-to-one, -one, and I'll tell you why. Um, in some countries, one-on-one -on -one has a completely different connotation uh, <laughs> than it does in the U.S. In the U.S., you know, we talk about one-on-ones with basketball or whatever, but in some countries, uh, you know, we had some of the people going, yeah, I want to do a one-on-one. -on -one. 
Yeah, no, not like that. So we, <laughs> we, we changed I'll, it. To, I'll, let me get composure back just thinking about that. So it's <laughs> one and one? What, one, two, one. One, two, one. That's okay, the phrase it. we use. But in North America, one on one is 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 also used. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of things that you could do. The bottom line is it's got to be reciprocal, meaning, you know, you got to give that person an opportunity to talk and you need an opportunity to talk. So we do have a construct. Uh, and I, I I wrote about it decades ago in one of my books. It's it's in uh, one of my latest books, Networking Like a Pro, the second edition of Networking Like a Pro. It's published by entrepreneur.com. Um, it's called the GAINS Exchange. GAINS is an acronym. This is, how do you do a good one-to-one? -one? Goals, accomplishments, interests, networks, and skills. That's the acronym. And particularly if you if the person kind of knows you, but they don't know you real well, and you know them, but you don't know them real well, this is a great technique to go deeper and, and start to build a relationship. So um, I would talk about my goals, personally, professionally, you would talk about yours. I would talk about my accomplishments. It's okay, brag a little bit, that's fine. Yours, my interests, your interests, the networks that I'm in, the networks you're in, the, the, maybe the special skills that I might have and the skills that you might have. Now, I've had people say, eh, I don't know, that sounds artificial. But let me tell you something. When I tested this mm -hmm. two decades ago, I did this with a, a BNI group, and I, there was an architect and an attorney, and, and they raised their hand as I was, you know, starting to do this, and everybody was good. And I said, Yeah, what's up? And they, they're like, We don't want to do it. I'm like, Why? And they, I swear to you, Mark, this is what they said because it's weenie. It's weenie. Weenie? Like it's weenie, weenie, yeah, like a hot dog, weenie. It's yeah. it's weenie, and I'm like, what do you mean? It's weenie. it's silly. We don't we don't want to do this. <laughs> okay, they were an architect and a lawyer, and I'm like, okay, I, I get it. it. It might seem silly to you, but would you just do it? And I'm going to have a survey afterwards. And if you think it was a failure, say so. Put it in there. This was totally weenie. Whatever you want to say, it's okay. So they did it. They got to interests, Mark, and found out. They were both soccer coaches called football in many countries, uh, it, it, but this was in the U.S. They were both soccer coaches for their son's soccer teams. Oh. That's it. They didn't talk about anything else. They never got to networks and skills. All they did was talk about soccer and coaching techniques and, and what they were doing, you know, what one was doing, what the other was doing. And they agreed to go scout for each other. So one would go and videotape uh, uh, the competition for the other, and then the other would go and videotape the competition for one, and they would share the videos with each other. Now, they had both been in this group for almost a year, and they had never given each other a referral. Within oh. three months, they had both given each other referrals. And I spoke to him about it. And I said, why do you think? And by the way, at the end of that, they said, this actually worked pretty well. Never mind. <laughs> we liked it. But um, three months, I said, why do you think that after a year, you would give each other referrals? And they said, because we really got to know each other, trust each other, and look out. we wanted to look out for each other. And it was that simple. That's wow. why one-to-ones work so well. And that's a technique that you can use with people that you can have a little bit of a connection with. Games exchange. You can find it in the book, Networking Like a Pro. So going to the next step, what does profitability look like? And key key point, better way to ask, what does profitability look like when it's done the right way? Yeah, so profitability, you have to remember that the VCP process is a referral process, not a sales process. And it is a process, not a formula. So V plus C does not necessarily equal P or profitability. You, you, it's a, it is literally a, a continuum. So you go from visibility to credibility. And if you do it right, you go to profitability, which is your question. Um, profitability is where you and I are giving each other referrals on an ongoing basis. We're sitting down, maybe doing a one-to-one. -one. I'm talking about some of the clients that I have that I think might um, be useful for you. You're talking about mm -hmm. some of the clients that you have that might be useful for me. And we are actually passing referrals to each other, legitimate referrals. And there's a big difference between a lead and a referral. Mm -hmm. Lead is, hey, there's a company that just moved into town. Uh, they might need your business. That's a lead. A referral is, hey, there's a company that moved into town. I know the vice president. I know they're looking for your services. Um, would you? I'd, I'd love to make an introduction. Is that something that you would like? Yes, it is. And then you go and you talk to your contact, and then you put the two of them together. 
a really good phase of profitability is you don't just introduce them together like by email. You introduce them together and go with them mm. to the introductory meeting. You don't have to sit in on the whole thing. Just say, hey, I wanted to be here and personally introduce you to, to Mark. I, you know, I'm introducing you to my, my customer, my, my contact. I want you to introduce you to Mark. Uh, I've known Mark for however long, and he's really good at what he does. And so I just wanted to put the two of you together, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. And you make that personal connection. That personal connection makes all the difference in the world. That's insane. I mean, that sounds like it would work so well. It, does. it sounds like you're saying, would I be on point by saying when, when you're networking, would it be more important to look for referral partners than clients? Because so many people just, oh, you don't want to buy from me. I'm going to move on to my next you know, conversation. Where does it, where do your ideas on that lie on the spectrum of referral partners or clients? What should you be looking for? Well, look, you know, we're all, we always want clients and you're going to stumble over that uh, opportunity and you know, a blind squirrel can find a nut, but you're looking for referrals. Because that's the farming versus hunting mentality. When you're hunting, you basically eat what you kill that day. But when you're farming, you 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 have bushels and bushels of food. You know your 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 fields are growing when you go on vacation for a few days, right? So the, you can get referrals and not even be in town. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think referrals are much much more important. And uh, you know uh, we we talked about this with with B, about BNI before we went in the interview. Um, we passed over 15 million referrals last year within our organization, 15 million referrals, over 15 million. And um, we generated, we call it thank you for closed business. And this is based on members reporting, not our reporting. They uploaded into our online platform. We generated 24.3 billion with a B, 24.3 billion US dollars in thank you for closed business. Uh, in the organization. Now, just to put that in perspective, Mark, yeah. we're actually, if you take a look at United Nations estimates of GDP, gross domestic product, there are actually 100 countries in the world with a lower GDP than what we generated for our members. And thank you for closed business. So yes, referrals <laughs> are way more powerful than just selling. Nothing wrong with selling, yeah. but it's it's that combination, and and if you're doing it right, you most of your sales are coming through referrals. Oh, it's so much! It's so much better that way to have someone vouch for you personally. Yeah, and the percent the closing ratio of referrals are significantly higher. Every study I've ever seen is significantly higher a uh, closing ratio of a referral than off of uh, an advertisement. And and I mm. I believe in advertising. I, I'm not opposed to advertising. Uh, in some businesses, it's absolutely necessary. But the closing ratio is higher on referrals. Oh well, they're half sold. I would imagine by yeah. during the first meeting, they're half sold. And I'm, if I hear you right, it's also getting into they probably have a problem. They want to like the when you mentioned the coach that right. they want to go. So you're not just you're not just making a sale for a friend. You're it sounds like you're actually helping them solve a problem and helping them yes. out. Yeah, and and from their perspective, there's nothing in it for you, right? Yep. If I refer you to a contact of mine. My contact is looking at me and there's like, there's nothing in it for you. No, there's nothing in it for me with you, but I'm building a relationship with you, Mark. And if I build a relationship with you, then you're more likely to refer me to someone else. And that referral, the, the, the percentage chance of it closing are much higher than me going out and just trying to hunt. So referrals are king. How about the other, just, the other side of the coin, while we're talking about it, what are some things you would just say, oh, don't do? If Just don't do this. What are some of the things that you've seen that you just shake your head and say, don't do that? It's not going to work for business. Yeah. In the well, long haul, not the blind, the, you know, the blind squirrel effect. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, it's the, you know, it's the, it's the networking disconnect stuff. It's the, you know, here's three copies of my business card. Maybe you can give, I, this happens almost all the time. I mean, I go to a big event, somebody gives me three cards and says, maybe you'll give a couple to someone, you know, and you know, I thank them, I take them, but I'm thinking, really? I didn't even know you. Do you think I'm going to refer you to somebody I know, like, and trust? No, I'm not going to do that. I don't, that's all in, in internal dialogue, but no, don't do that. So um, I, I call people like that card dealers. 
They're just going to meetings and they're passing out cards, right? That's it. Mm. My co-author for the book I mentioned, Networking Like a Pro, has a great story. He has this fantastic dog, uh, Brandy, a Labrador, beautiful dog. And um, he said, look, if that worked, this is what I would do. Everybody loves Brandy. They just love Brandy. If that worked, I would put a little saddle on her. And on one side, I would put in my business cards and I would say, feel free to take a card. And on the other side, I would say, I have a little note that says, please put your card in here. And I would send Brandy into the room and Brandy would come back out and there'd be all kinds of business cards in there. But it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Passing out your cards, not enough. It's about building relationships. So uh, when you go to meetings, look to build connections with people. Look, when you meet somebody, ask yourself, where am I in the VCP process with this person? Mm -hmm. If I'm not even in visibility, I need to get to know them. And hopefully they'll get to know me. If I know them and I'm working towards credibility, I'll ask them about the projects they're working on and how they're going. It's a different conversation with people that you're at credibility with. If I'm at profitability with somebody, then the conversation is, how did that sales program go? I, you know, I, I put some stuff on social media for you. Did you get a good response? You know, that's three different conversations uh, that you might have at a networking meeting. And, and most people don't have three different conversations. They have one. Mm -hmm. And they're just looking for that new person that they can sell to, as opposed to building the relationships with the people they already know. Well, that's the way to do it. I mean... It, it, it all, it's all about relationships. And with everything we've talked about, we've covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time, relatively, at least to what you could have spoken about. If you were to say, when it comes to the mindset and networking as a whole, if you were to say, above all, do this at least, do this one thing, just at least do this, what would you tell people to do? Well, it would, it would be the mindset, the VCP, but uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a sound bite that m maybe people can, can lean on as they're networking. You, you know the old expression, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Mm -hmm. I would argue it's not either. It is not what you know or who you know. It's how well you know each other that counts. I have some amazing contacts in my telephone. So what? The question is, could I call them? Would they answer the phone if I called them? And if I asked them for a favor, would they be willing to do the favor? That's what counts in building a relationship. Just having the contacts, not enough. It's about the, the, the strength of the relationship that you have with them. That is amazing. And if people want to find you online, Where's the best place or places to go? Where should they be? Yeah. What should they be checking out these days? Well, BNI.com, obviously, if you have any interest in visiting, we have now 11,150 chapters in 75 countries around the world. Uh, but I also have a blog. Uh, it, all free stuff up there. I've been blogging for 15 years. Um, uh, IvanMeisner.com, M-I-S-N-E-R, IvanMeisner.com. And my latest book, The Third Paradigm, is up there on that blog. You can you can see that. And it's about co-creation and dealing with conflict. Thank you so much for the time, Ivan. I really appreciate this. Truly my pleasure, Mark. And I'm happy to come back anytime. Sounds good. And scene. <laughs>